everyone, you're watching Andy's Fishing and Wild Cook. Today, we're going to fish with the lures that we found in episode 484. I've found all of these and that's all I'm going to fish with today. I'm just going to put some trebles onto these hooks, the um, lure here, and the Zerek live shrimp that I found. I've just got one of these hooks here. It's not the standard hook, but I think it should work quite well. Looks a little bit big. So uh, I'm not going to use that. I don't know what that was all about. Um, yeah, big mess. I'm looking forward to using this killer lure. I've never used one of these before. I have used killer lures before, but not this one here. This has got a, um, a rattle you can exchange. Obviously, I've only got that one rattle, which I think is the, the fine rattle. What I'll also do is talk you through each cast and explain why I cast where I cast and the theory behind why I'm fishing the way I am. And as always, we'll do a catch and cook with what we catch. So first cast with the killer lure, this is a two deep, is along this edge here. It floats nice and quick, so if it hits a snag it should come out. A nice drain, oh that was a barrel I think, just there. So I'm just cast right up the drain, hold the rod nice and high because this lure does go quite deep. Oh, little barra. <laughs> there you go. The found lure works. Haven't caught a fish, but he tried to grab it, and that was a that barra was only you know two and a half times the size of that lure. That was cool. First cast with the Zeric Life Shrimp, and I'm deliberately going past this snag because the current's coming towards me. Oh, oh yes. Oh. Yep, he's got me under. Damn it. I thought I saw a bit of movement there. That stick sticks out like that and I went right over it and... Yeah, we're going to have to get that out. Oh, can't get it out. There it is. <sighs> that was only the third cast. And we got nailed by a fish. Now have a look at this. I was lucky not to lose that. See that line? That's been shaved off on probably an oyster. And if I go... Like that, pop, gone. So I've got to retie that. Ooh, lucky I spotted that. Yeah, always check your line after you've had a hit. That obviously was on a stick, but I'd say it had a barnacle or an oyster there. Bit of a uh, log sitting in the bank here. I'm going to cast over it, like onto the mud. There we go. And then drop it in the water. Oh, scared the little bait fish. And then just fish it down the, the side of this log. Just can't see it from far away. That's him. That's got him. Got him. Got him. Yep. That's a cod, I think. Yes. Oh, not a bad. Oh, I dropped him. Not a bad cod. Recycled lure. Found lure. <laughs> they work. And I have just sharpened that hook, so it is sharp. Just didn't quite grab it properly. Anyway, so far, two lures I've used have um, raised fish. I'm constantly changing between the two lures I've got on the two rods. Right now I've just chucked the killer lure back in. There's um, yeah, a couple of nice trees there. Lots of little bait. And I just fish whatever lure I think is going to be best in that spot. Okay, there's a bit of a back eddy corner here. Just going to go straight in the middle of it. You can see that when... Oh yes! Oh, that was a big fish. I think that was a barra. When the um, the tide goes in and out, that creates a back eddy. And obviously, fish like to sit there, and I reckon that's a barra. I'm choosing to use the killer lure in this spot because it looks like it's quite deep. And the killer lure does get right down there. But that thing hit it as soon as that lure touched the water. Okay, that's what happened. I didn't miss that fish. I lost the front treble bugger. Anyway, we'll put another treble on that. I reckon we might have a go along here. That fish there, he won't be back. He's got a hook stuck in him. Okay, let's try this back edge. It looks good, but I think it's facing the wrong way. Yep, yeah, got him. Yes! <laughs> oh, I lost him again! That looked like a nice fish too. Hooks are still okay. Let's go in again. Oh man, 
I'll tell you what, this kill all works. Works very well. There's our friend the crocodile. Getting a bit of afternoon sun. It's about as good as I can zoom in there at the moment. So we get a bit closer. There he goes. Heading into the water. Yeah, the size of this crocodile. Look at him. That's well over four meters. Wow. So I'm not fishing the one you can see, I'm fishing the one that's two meters out underwater. Ooh, something's going on over there. Let's go right through the middle of this snag here. There we go, beautiful. Walk it rod nice and high and walk it through there. Drop it down. Yep, oh, oh, yes. Oh, it's a cod, I think. He's got me right under everything. Oh, it could be a barra. Just the way, oh, I'm gonna lose this lure. Oh, it could be a bar, it could be, it could be anything really, it could be a jack. Just the way it just bulldozed back in. That's how tight it is. We'll, uh, we'll go over there and see if we can, I don't know, try and lift up whatever he's under. But yeah, I think he's under the big log. It just felt really solid, like a bulldozer going under a, under a bridge. Okay, that's off. That's off. That's that's encouraging. Oh, yep. There we go. Gone. Leader and everything. Oh, there's my plastic. <laughs> Someone lost it. I found it. I got smashed up by a fish, and then I found it again. Look at that. That is wild. Oh, would have loved to have seen that fish. Oh. That is definitely the plastic that just got taken, and it actually looks like in good nick. Well, let's retire that one, we're not not doing real well. So I'm calling that for either a cod or a groper. It just, it just steam trained back into that snag, or under that snag. I had no chance of getting that fish. So I'm just bringing up a new leader. Amazing I got that plastic back, it's, yeah, that's wild. I've had some very bad luck today, <laughs> just, just not sticking any fish. The killer lure that's got brand new trebles on it, um, VMC strong, but on that one barra, the yeah, the split ring failed. We're gonna keep going. Really good snag looking, looking snag up here. And interestingly, that that cod back there, I did about I'm gonna say 12 casts at all the different spots, and until it was this far from him, he didn't grab it. We might try the RMG little, I think 90 mil. I think that's 90 mil. Um, I actually forgot to put this one in at the end of the video. I found it, obviously, um, episode 484, but at the end when I did the tally, I forgot to put this guy in. So someone actually commented on that. Thank you. Ooh, big splash. Let's get out here and catch this fish. It's splashing around. Right now the current is going that way, but because of the bend in the river, it's on this side here, it's coming back this way. So we'll cast around this snag. And hopefully that fish will be sitting right on my right hand side here. Yeah, got him. Oh, what is it? Oh. What have we got? A little a bit of a cod. We'll measure him. And uh, yeah, we'll see. You never know, he could come close. These cod need to be 38 centimetres to be legal, and he is, that's right on zero, he is just under by half a centimetre. Hey buddy, half a centimetre and you get to live. Anyway, I'll let him go. i have to get another one. There you go. Well, that's pretty cool. That lure got a fish. You'll notice that the bib is actually quite cracked, so I'm going to retire this one and super glue that up before I use it again. But that's cool, that's um, three lures that I found that have had fish attack them, one that's caught. We'll give the bomber 24 long A a run. Nice little drain here, always good for a barramundi, maybe mangrove jack, cod, threadfin, trevally, don't know. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, yep, yeah. that's a big barrow, I think. Oh, 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 barrel thread fin. There's a big swirl there. Oh, he's shaking. Oh, I need to, oh, I lost it. That was a big fish. Oh, these, um, <laughs> these found lures still work. Just put new hooks on them. That was a big fish. He hit it so hard and just ran like a train. Wow. Oh, my heart's going 100 miles an hour. Wish I had a stuck to that one. Oh, tell you what. Yep, got him. Oh, little cod. That's definitely undersized. Well, at least you're stuck, buddy. Hey, eh? had terrible luck today with fish sticking. Hey, eh, little cod, off you go. That is good. And as you can see, I've put on brand new VMC. I think they're 3x hooks. So there's no reason I should be dropping so many fish. But yeah, just just one of those days for me. Pull that lure out of his mouth. Let's see if we come back. Oh, got him this. Ah, oh, it's a brim. Oh, I thought that was the barramundi. Oh. Oh. I just downgraded. That's all right. Another fish on a found lure. That's pretty cool. Nice black brim or pikey brim. There we go. These found lures are definitely catching the fish. We're not going to keep him. He's um, probably just on legal, but we'll, we'll let him go. Let's see if we can get that barramundi. That was that was cool. He, oh, I just pulled that lure right out of out of his grip. Off you go. not done with this prawn yet I'm gonna try a different style of hook one that's probably a bit better suited to this prawn and there's a log underwater here oh, yeah, I found it on the depth sounder it's in about four meters of water and that's where that extra TT lead weight will come in really handy it'll get that down and you'll notice that hook is sitting a lot better than the other hook so the hook up rate should be better so here on the side scan you can see that log, that's what we'll be fishing. It um, doesn't look like a log at the moment because yeah, the boat's sort of going a little bit weird. But that's yeah, I think that's a log. So the log's about 10 metres away and sitting right on the bottom of the, the river. So we've got to wait for this to go all the way down. That actually looks like it's getting getting whacked there. That looked like it was getting getting hit by something. Oh yeah, it is getting hit. Got him, yes! What have we got? Oh! Ooh. First cast with this on this spot. Oh, it feels like a trevally, I think. That's what I'm going to go for. Got a lot of pull. What have we got? No! It is a grunter! Oh, I think we'll cook him up. That's a good fish. That is a good fish. Oh, I think I got a bunch of hits there on the way down. And then this guy. Oh, look at that! Woo! Striped grunter, I believe this is. There's a couple of difference. There's a spotted grunter and a striped grunter. He's got kind of stripes here. But that is a beautiful sized fish. Look at him. Let's get a measurement on him. Put his tail right on the zero. And... Oh, he is 52 centimeters. Look at that. What a beautiful critter, hey? Oh, you can hear him grunting there. Hey, look at the eye. I hope you guys can see that, that, that iridescence in the eye. Anyway, these are one of the best eating fish in the, in the ocean. Look at that eye now. It's, it's gone from orange to red to blue. That's, that's amazing. And his skin is all like purple and 
blue and green wow so don't forget this is a lure I found on the beach do a little glamour shot of the grunter so um, yeah he's hard to get in the photo in the in the frame there he's a, yeah beautiful fish one of the best eating fish look at the colors on him I love these things so I managed to catch a couple of fish I uh, missed a lot of big ones today uh, not the lures fault um, found lures can catch fish that's uh, today's conclusion so it's, yeah it's just me I I didn't convert a lot of those fish some were really good some I didn't even get to I, um, I spooked them before they, they even had a chance to grab the lure so what we'll do is we'll go home we'll cook up that fish and uh, yeah get away from these sand flies today they're really bugging me I, I just can't handle them at the moment they're just itching me everywhere so sometimes it's just just got to call it a day and that's now <laughs> we're back in the bush kitchen and I'm gonna cook up that fish I'm gonna do it pretty basic sometimes I like to really snazz it up and other times just just pretty basic this time it's gonna be pretty basic but it should taste really nice um, a lot of butter going into this dish actually that's almost everything that's going into this dish we're gonna cook on the snow peak table grill now the first thing I've done is lit the charcoal and let those coals get really hot the second thing I did was scale the grunter so we can eat the skin, just uh, rip all the scales off. And then the third thing is gut the fish and cut its head off. I'll use the head for crab pot bait and we'll just remove the guts. So here we are now. Okay, the coals are almost ready. I've scaled and gutted the fish. So what we'll do is we'll put some cuts in the fish like so. This is uh, to let the flavor in. I really like to just use the bare minimum of ingredients because you get the flavor of the fish uh, putting all heaps of spices on it is good for like muddy 52 centimeter grunter he deserves to be eaten in a in a respectful manner before we prepare the fish i'm just going to get the coals and put them in the griller get that up to temperature and then it's yeah it's really quick cooking this one we'll just spread that those coals around a little bit perfect amount break them up Ooh, it's actually very hot so the good thing about this um, snow peak grill is I can change the height of it check this out there we go I've just dropped it down to regulate that heat that's um, yeah it's a great feature of this grill so then I'm gonna get some uh, Himalayan um, table salt pink table salt put it all over the skin and into the cuts on the fish now a lot of people have asked me about the um, the Uniflame table barbecue and I don't think it's being made anymore so if you want a nice little table barbecue or grill I can highly recommend this one here this one's made by Snow Peak as I've said like, it's actually got like a double wall on it so it doesn't get too hot well, that, that bit there will be hot but the underneath will be, be quite cool I've got it sitting on a couple of tiles at the moment we need to get some, um, some butter we use quite a lot of butter I'm going to bake this fish in aluminium foil the reason for that is I want to keep the juices and the butter with the fish. Now I know I said before I was going to cut the head off, but this grill is actually big enough to do the whole fish, so why not do the whole fish? There's actually quite a lot of meat on the cheek, in the top of the head that you can eat, and it's um, really quite delicious. I've already put three slices of butter under the fish, and we'll put three slices on top of the fish as well. This is probably about 75 grams of butter. It's um, quite a bit, but it should make this fish taste just superb. And check out behind me, the local bush turkeys come in to, to see what he can find. Food-wise, he can, he can smell the fish. I don't know, don't know where he is exactly. Uh, let's see, there he is. Hello, Mr. Bush Turkey. Hey. As soon as you um, process a bit of fish or something like that, they hang around. I don't feed them. It's actually illegal to feed them, and I don't really want them hanging around. They um, they really damage the garden and stuff. So and they they sneak in and eat my chicken food. So I'm not a big fan of them. They are natu natural, um, so yeah, I don't encourage them at all. So then I just wrap it up and we'll wrap it up quite well. Put 
put a layer on top as well. And we'll just continue to do that. One on top, one underneath. Until we've got, yeah, we'll go, go three layers on each side. Now, some of you will be asking, where's Narrative? We haven't seen Narrative for a while. Well, she's working on the computer. And we've actually got a big trip planned. We're going to sail from the Gold Coast up to the Whit Sundays. So that's going to be an interesting trip. Hopefully, I can film along the way. Well, I really will be filming. I will be filming along the way. I just don't know what I'll find because I've never been there. So we're going to go to some remote islands and fish, oyster, maybe do some spear fishing. Who knows? All right, we'll put that. That's on the grill now. And we'll just put that over the top like so. This fish is a little bit big for this device. But I think that will work very nicely. Uh, probably about 15 minutes. Do 8 minutes, 9 minutes one side and then 6 minutes the other side, something like that. Now my preparation took a little longer than expected so I'm going to raise the, um, the coal bed which will increase the heat. It's that easy. I can hear that fish start to bubble and sizzle away, which means it's cooking nicely. Just thought I'd show you. All I've got is a couple of pieces of tile sitting underneath this. I've just got a bit of a wooden frame here to make it look nice. But this grill is just sitting on two pieces of tile like that. I don't want to ruin my nice bench, so that's enough to keep the heat off my table. That's pretty cool. So that fish has been going 10 minutes now, and you get to check out my other set of tongs. These are made by Uniflame. They're also very versatile and because they're a little bit stronger they, they're better for picking up heavier things. Just grab this fish with both sets of tongs and flip him over. And we'll do another seven or eight minutes on the other side. I've decided to go a little longer. He's been in the esky for, for quite a while. Now you might be thinking I'm not cooking this part of the fish, the tail. But if you watch really carefully, it's a bit hard to see, there's actually steam coming out of here. So there's steam being created in this part of the fish and it's coming out here. So that's actually ooh, really hot. Oh, and you can smell that butter. Mmm, the fish, it smells like it's almost done. And you, yeah, you definitely smell that butter. So we've only got a minute or two left, I reckon. I've, um, I've also cranked up this pin here, if you've noticed that, I've gone from high, uh, lowest to medium to highest. As the coals don't burn down, I've just move, move the tray up a bit so that yeah, the coals come up and cook, cook nice and strong. It's the moment of truth. I'm just going to get this skewer and poke it into the fish. Woo, yes, okay. <laughs> it feels really soft to go in and is really hot in the middle. So that fish is done. Let's get him off. Oh, I'm going to try and preserve all that butter so that we can have fish drenched in like a butter sauce. That's only the first layer and that smell is divine. Okay, let's get this layer off. So you can see I needed all those layers because the butter juice already coming out. There we have Grunter cooked in butter. Oh, he does look good. Yes, I'm glad I did the whole fish. He doesn't at all fit on the plate. Uh, that's a bit of a problem. <laughs> and there we have it. That fish is just falling apart and he is he's delicious. Last thing to do now is some lemon pieces and sprinkle of parsley. Oh, look at that. That's only three or four ingredients. It's really just the fish and butter, salt and parsley with a lemon. You know? But really it's just a few ingredients and that looks just spectacular. Check that out. That is just looking amazing. Mmm. As happens quite a lot, uh, my cooking tends to get into the dark a little bit. So I've just got my iPhone there and um, I'll just have a little taste of this. A bit of, bit of lemon on there. There's plenty of sauce 
butter sauce on the plate here. Yeah, you, you can't really see that, it's hard to hold that. But I'm going to have a bit of fish with a bit of skin. Oh, that's actually quite a large bit of skin there. Mmm. Mmm. That's very nice. Oh. Next bit I'm going to just drench in the butter. Mm. If you keep it simple, fish is the best. Ooh, the butter's dripping off. Mm. If you ask me, fish is best. Butter, bit of salt. Maybe a little parsley, lemon. Mm. Oh, this is this is good. This this is a good way. This is a, a respectful way to treat this fish. <clears throat> now I'm going to take this um, over to Narita. She's been working on the computer all day. Hopefully we get to do a well. We will do a sailing trip up up and down up the Queensland coast, and hopefully I can make a bunch of videos either afterwards or while we're sailing. Um, it'll be very interesting. I actually get seasick, so it's going to be a bit of a challenge for me. I have spent long, long periods on boats, but never from Gold Coast up to the West Sundays doing the whole, whole trip. So, little bit skin. <laughs> Alright, this fish is still really nice and hot, and um, yeah, this is our dinner. Mmm, look at the butter dripping off that, oops. Mm. Mm. If you cook fish no other way, salt, butter, lemon, bit of parsley. Mm-mm, can't go wrong. Thank you for watching all the way to the end, it actually helps my videos a lot, and if you watch two or three, it's even better. If you want to check out a really cool two-day solo 60 kilometer offshore adventure you can click up there and if prawns oysters and salmon is more your thing check out that video over there it's had over 700,000 views thanks for watching